Monty Brewster works as a relief pitcher in a minor basketball league. It's so minor that the game needs to be paused every so often to allow trains to pass through the ground. Monty tells his friend Spike that a man in the audience has been capturing him for the last three games, thinking they want him in the big league. Spike, on the other hand, tells him to forget it. That night, Monty and Spike are celebrating their victory by attacking two women in a bar. Suddenly, the boyfriends of the girls appear, and a large fight occurs. The next morning, Monty and Spike are taken to court where they are found guilty of multiple charges and the judge sets their bail at $8,000. Since they don't have that money, they are about to be sent back to jail, when suddenly the man with the camera stands up, saying he represents an anonymous party that will pay their bail. Monty exclaims happily they're going to the big time. Next, they're arriving in New York, where they head into a corporate building, and Monty is led into a law office where he meets some men. They ask him if he knew his uncle Rupert Horn, and Monty says he doesn't. Then Ed tells him that his uncle Rupert quarreled with his family in the 30 seconds, went out west, and no one ever heard from him again. He died last month and Monty is then shown a message from his uncle, who expresses his disappointment that he is a failed baseball player, but assures him that they will have a good time. He tells Monty that he's going to teach him to dislike spending money, and that if he can spend $100 million in 30 days, he'll get $1 billion. But there's a catch, he can't own anything after 30 days, not houses, jewelry, cars, or anything else, just his clothes. He can donate 5% to charity but cannot give away any more. Also, he can't explain why he's spending the money, which is an automatic disqualification. His uncle believes Monty can't do it and offers him $10 million right away, but it's up to him whether he wants to go for the $1 billion. The two men, Granville and Baxter, tell Monty to take the $10 million because it is extremely difficult not to accumulate assets. Monty wonders what will happen if he tries but fails to spend the $100 million. Ed, a neutral third party, responds that Granville and Baxter will receive the $1 billion and administer it in some charitable manner in exchange for significant fees. Monty pauses for a moment before declaring that he will go for the $1 billion. Ed claims that if he owns any assets in 30 days, he will sell them. He will not receive any of the inheritance until exactly midnight. Angela, an accountant, is assigned to account for all of his receipts during the 30 days so they can determine whether he made it or not. They all go to the bank to check on Monty's $100 million, and he is completely overwhelmed. He asks the cameraman if he wants to work for him, promising $30,000 per week. The bank says they'll give him a 24% interest rate on his money, but Monty demands no interest at all, and Angela gets upset, saying he'll be losing $20 million in interest every year. Monty asks a guard how much he makes in a year, and the guard says about $900 per week. Monty offers him $11,000 per week if he brings $3 million in cash, and he hires 20 other guards for $10,000 per week to follow him. Spike is furious that he is paying so much, but Monty asks him to trust him. Monty then calls his baseball coach, Charlie, and informs him that he has inherited $100 million and will arrange for their team to play the New York Yankees, but Charlie does not believe him and hangs up. Monty becomes discouraged, but then hails a taxi and asks the driver if he wants to be his driver for $14,000 per week. America, what a country, says the driver. People praise him when Monty turns around and asks who wants to eat lunch. Next, Monty asks for the most expensive wine, which costs $400 a bottle and yells, asking who wants to eat. Monty asks Angela if he can hire someone to do her work so they can have fun, but she refuses because she has a fiancé and is not interested in having fun. Monty says he'd like to meet him, but Angela says he can't buy everyone's time in this world. Monty then arrives at a hotel, but the owner informs him that the top two floors have already been reserved. Monty inquires how much they are paying and is told $275,000. Monty offers $2.75 million per month, and the owner immediately responds that he and his friends are welcome. A few days later, Monty and Angela are talking when Warren walks in. Angela informs Monty that they will be late for the benefit, which Warren explains. Monty says he'd like to make a small contribution, donating $300,000 and Warren gets astonished. He says he likes the room's decor, but he'd do some things differently because his ex-wife was a decorator and some things rubbed off on him. Monty asks Warren for $700,000 to redecorate his office, and Warren immediately agrees. Angela informs him that he is a lawyer, not a decorator, to which he responds that there is nothing wrong with being a decorator. Following that, Granville and Baxter become incensed that Warren is taking a leave of absence to work for Monty. Warren has called his ex-wife Marilyn two days later to help him redecorate his office, which Monty thinks is fantastic, telling Marilyn that money isn't an issue and that they can create whatever they want. Monty has started a business, and later a man approaches him and asks him to invest in transporting an iceberg from the North Pole to Africa to provide people with clean water. Monty thinks it's a good idea and asks if $3 million is enough to get it there, which the man believes is adequate. Suddenly, his baseball coach Charlie calls, and Monty tells him that he will go to any length to prepare their home stadium for the Yankees game. 
Monty is waiting for his teammates from home, who are arriving in helicopters, while Granville and Baxter remark that they probably underestimated him. Monty expresses his eagerness to show the team the luxury homes he has rented for them. The next day, the team practices for the game against the Yankees, and Monty and Spike are rested. Spike suggests that he make some long-term investments, such as in precious metals or stamps, and Monty has an epiphany. Soon after, Monty walks into a stamp collector's shop and requests their most expensive stamps. Spike remarks that this has to be Monty's smartest move yet. The next morning, Granville and Baxter are laughing, telling them he has purchased an asset after hearing that he purchased a stamp for $1.25 million. But then, they come across a letter from Monty with the stamp still on it, and they become enraged because it is no longer an asset. They then tell Warren about Monty's deal with his deceased uncle and instruct him to make a minor error in his wife's accounting so that the $1 billion goes to them. Monty sees on TV that his S shares have tripled in value as a result of his investment in the iceberg, and he becomes frustrated, telling his employees to sell everything, which they say is a bad idea. Monty insists on selling everything and donating the proceeds to charity. That evening, Monty meets with Ed and tells him he's tired of acting rich despite not being able to spend the $100 million. Ed is uncertain but believes the baseball game is a step in the right direction. Spike enters his office the next day, telling Monty that he hopes he won't be angry, but he made some investments for him, investing in some oil wells and making him $10 million. Monty becomes depressed, remarking that he's right back where he started, and the others suspect that something is wrong with him. Warren comes in and says he needs $20,000 for a deposit on some expensive furniture they're renting. Monty says he wants to be alone for a while, so they all leave. He turns on the television and learns that the two candidates for mayor of New York, Heller and Salvino, have been pouring scandalous sums of money into their campaigns. Angela tells Spike that she believes Monty feels guilty about making money, which is why he gets so upset and does things like run for mayor. When reporters question Monty about his political views, he simply says that no one should vote for him, Heller, or Salvino and that no one should vote for anyone above them. People become captivated by Monty's unique standpoint that no one should vote for any of the candidates. Granville and Baxter remark that he's on every station during prime time, running TV ads in all 52 states in case any New Yorkers are on vacation. A few days later, Heller and Salvino meet in private, saying they need to do something about Monty, who is calling them mean things and suggesting they sue him for every penny he has. Monty then tells reporters that he had to pay them $4 million for the emotional harm he caused his shady opponents. The next day, Monty gives a pep talk to his team, telling them they're going to crush the Yankees. A train comes through the outfield with Monty's campaign advertisement on it before the game, which is broadcast nationally. The game begins with Monty pitching. One of Monty's team members catches the first ball and strikes out the first Yankee. Warren arrives elsewhere, in a furniture store, to request a $20,000 refund for the furniture he returned, and they hand it back to him. Suddenly, a Yankee hits a grand slam home run, and Monty is forced to leave the field. Ed appears in the locker room, telling Monty that it was a valiant effort and that his uncle would have been proud of him. He then claims he came to warn him that if he wins the election, which it appears he will, he will receive $170,000 in salary, which will be considered an asset, and he will lose his inheritance. Monty walks out to give a speech after the game, saying he'd like to tip his hat to the Yankees. Monty claims that anyone can inherit millions of dollars and buy an election, but it takes a true athlete to become a professional athlete like the Yankees. People are surprised when he tells them that the election was a joke and that he never intended to win. Monty then informs the audience that he has $105,000 remaining and plans to throw a party tonight, to which they are all invited. That night, Monty talks with Angela, who tells him she's sorry his inheritance is gone and that she'd probably leave if she didn't have any work. Monty offers to accompany her to the party, but she becomes upset, saying she can't believe he's celebrating becoming broke and then becomes angry that he squandered $100 million for nothing. Monty promises that everything will be different tomorrow, but she ignores him. Later at the party, Monty's friends and employees approach him, saying they gathered some money for him because he's all broke. Monty thanks them but says he'll lust spend it and that they should keep it. Spike approaches him, and Monty almost reveals the deal he has with his uncle before stopping himself. Spike says he has no idea why he's doing this, but then asks if he spent $100 million. They laugh when Monty says yes. He then says he's tired of spending and retires to his room to sleep. The next day, in the afternoon, Monty awakens in his bed, and the hotel owner appears, telling him he must leave immediately. Monty thanks him, and then people tell him he has to return the clothes he's wearing. Monty changes into his old clothes and heads to his office. Marilyn appears as he approaches, asking Monty if he likes it. Monty tells her sincerely that this is a room in which he could die. She smiles and tells everyone that they can take everything and return it to the companies from which they rented it. As he walks away, he speaks with the doorman, who tells him he'll never guess who voted for him. A reporter observes that no one knows where the broken Monty is right now, but that he should turn on the television to hear the good news that neither Heller nor Salvino has won the election. 
Monty arrives at the Granville and Baxter law firm when Warren appears out of nowhere, announcing that he has received a $20,000 refund. Monty screams in desperation that he's had enough of this. Granville and Baxter give him a pen in the office to sign over the inheritance to the law firm. Angela appears outside, having worked late, and asks Warren what he's doing there. Ed tells Monty that he still has two minutes, but Monty wonders what he should do in two minutes. Warren says he guesses he can tell her now, explaining that Monty's uncle forced him to spend $100 million to receive his true inheritance of $1 billion, but it was a secret and Monty couldn't tell anyone about it. Angela inquires as to how he came to know the secret, to which Warren responds that it is also a secret. But then Angela says Monty made it because she confirmed he spent the entire $100 million. Warren then reveals that he received a $20,000 refund for renting furniture that he recently returned to Monty, causing Monty to lose his job. Angela storms into the room, stopping Monty and explains how Warren withheld $20,000 on purpose so Monty would believe he spent it. Monty becomes enraged at Warren and calls him a scumbag. Warren cheerfully declares that he has lost, and Monty punches him in the face. He exclaims that he's glad Monty hit him because he'll now sue him for hitting him, calling him a loser as the clock begins to ding-dong, counting down to 12. Monty then has an idea and says he'll need an attorney and asks Angela if she'd accept $20,000 in advance to be his attorney, which she does. She scrambles a receipt for the $20,000 and finishes just as the clock strikes midnight. Ed, as executor of his great-uncle's will, declares that the entire $1 billion is now his. Ed mentions that he suspects a fraud conspiracy and asks Monty if he agrees to a full investigation, to which Monty agrees. Monty tells Ed that he's a good man and then tells the other three that he'll see them in court and departs with Angela. 